Hey everybody, it's Jim Johnson, the project manager for Star Trek Adventures. Happy Tuesday to you, October, what are we, October 5th, October 6th? Yes, yeah, it's October 5th, 2021. Got a quick video here for you tonight, wanted to do a quick unboxing for you, and just a quick update. Uh, things are rolling along, on the line, keeping busy. Uh, just wanted to kind of share this one with you tonight. This is the, uh, I received a package today from the UK, and this is the, uh, the uh, Shackleton Expanse uh, source book, uh, campaign guide, actually, and I thought I would uh, show it off to you. Check out all the packaging here. Uh, DHL was the uh, <coughs> kind enough to deliver it today, and so I picked it up. And I have not had an opportunity yet, obviously, to open it or even to uh, to really look at it. Um, I've been staring at a, a PDF of this book for for ages now. It seems like uh, I feel like this book has been in production. Uh, or had been in production for um, a couple of years, um, although it was actually, I mean, the, the the beginnings of it started, you know, five years ago, 2016, when we started developing the uh, the uh, the game, right? Because uh, it began as the Living Campaign, and then it uh, it morphed um, into uh, the Shackleton Expanse book, and uh, so in in 2019 is when the the Living Campaign. Uh, first season kind of uh, ended, or uh, and then we took we put on a bit of a hiatus, and uh, got some things, uh, some other products worked out, including the core rulebook, uh, the Klingon core rulebook, and then um, uh, we started developing this in the uh, fall of 2019, and then of course COVID hit, right? So um, this is this book has been a long time in the makings, and uh, I have. I have personally put a lot of effort into it, obviously, and um, my entire team has put a lot of effort into it. And I'm um, just looking at the at the sealed copy here. This is, wow, this is, so I, I mentioned this on another video. Um, when you're staring at digital files for a long time, whether they're Word documents or PDF, um, it, you lose sight of just how big of a book is you're working on, right? And so like, when I was working on like the command source book and the sciences source book and the, and all the other quadrant books, et cetera, the adventure books, uh, those are all like 124 to 140 pages, give or take. And even then the PDFs, like you don't really notice the size of a document of, of, a, of a book while you're flipping through the pages. Uh, cause it's just, you know, a PDF or even a word document. It's just endless. You're, you're just scrolling through pages over and over again. Right. And it's not until you actually get it in a physical form that you're like, oh, okay, now it's actually a book. And you kind of get a sense for, like, how big a 128-page hardcover is or how big a, you know, 360-page core book is. Or, you know, in the case of the Klingon book, that thing ended up 400 pages, right? And it's like, <coughs> excuse me, you don't appreciate how big a 400-page book is until you get the behemoth in the mail and you're like, oh, my gosh, this is a really big book. This is a lot of pages. There's just, you know, a ton of content. Anyway, all this is to say that Shackleton, uh, through, you know, five years of, of starting off as the living campaign, and then two years of development, uh, just, it, it turned into, like, it, it's hard to gauge how big it turned out to be, right? Because, like, Word documents are different than layout documents, because, of course, you fit a different amount of words per page, right? You can put about 250 words per page on a, on a Word document, depending on how the formatting is and the spacing. But when you move that over to InDesign and you start developing the layout of a book, um, the, just because the font size has changed and you know the layout and all that stuff, um, you actually can end up putting like five or six hundred words on a page, right? And so, the, just like the scale of it just eludes me sometimes. And you know, I have a short memory, so when I work on a book, you know, I work it to completion, and then as soon as it's done, and as soon as I deliver it to the to the people to print it like I purge my brain or like my brain my brain automatically purges and so like I forget a lot of the like the nuts and bolts of like how this thing came together right uh so I, I mean just looking at this thing like this thing is massive right this thing is dense and I even grabbed the I, I knew it was going to be dense but I wasn't sure just how dense and so I grabbed my copy of the core book uh, of the Starfleet core book and I don't know if you can see this but like holy cr Holy crap, look at that. I mean, <laughs> they're almost the same size. The The core rule book is a 364-page, um, you know, monstrosity in and of itself. And and the Shackleton book is, like, literally very... I mean, I can see there's just a little bit of a difference, right? I mean, I guess I'd have to line them up side by side. 
to really get a sense of just how different they are. But it's, actually, it's even hard to tell because the core book um, uh, clearly, like, I, mean, I don't know if you can see it, but like, this is my well-loved original first edition uh, core rule book. It's taped. It's it's well loved. It's gotten daily use for five years now. It's got, I got my tabs on it. This thing has been beat to heck and back, and still still kicking. Uh, but anyway, uh, I just wanted to show you like the, this Shackleton book. Oh my gosh, this thing is just gigantic, and um, um, it is. I mean, other than the two core rule, like other than the Klingon core book and the and the uh, <coughs> excuse me, other than the two core books, right? Um, this is by by far the biggest book that we've done for Star Trek uh, in in the five years of the, of the game line, and uh, it is truly, 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 truly a labor of love. I mean, the the entire team that I had working on this book poured their heart and soul into it, and uh, you know, not to not to not to make a big deal out of it, but I mean, you can see um, I have a hand brace on, and that's because I went to the doctor yesterday because uh, I wasn't. My, my hand wasn't feeling good, wasn't feeling right for a couple days now, and I wasn't sure what was going on. So I went to get it uh, checked out, and it turns out that uh, the doctor was fairly confident that I have uh, carpal tunnel in my left, my left hand. And uh, I think part of that, or you know, probably a good portion of it, is by virtue of the fact that my, my day job and my work for Medifius uh, involves me being on computer you know, all day, every day, uh, for years and years and years. And so um, I didn't think I would succumb to, uh, or I didn't think I'd ever actually get carpal tunnel, but, you know, here it is. So I'm into, uh, you know, getting the brace and getting the regular doses of ibuprofen and all that good stuff. And mm, uh, I, I don't know if you're like me, but, oh, that fresh book smell, it's so good. And uh, <laughs> anyway, I, I digress, but I'm, I'm pulling the, Pulling the, the wrap off of this thing. Oh my gosh, this is a pristine cup. Pristine book. And I can't wait to, to dig into it here a little bit. Now, obviously, the uh, you know shameless plug, I'll get this out of the way. Uh, the Shackleton book is available for, for purchase right now. Uh, if you are in the UK, copies are in the UK warehouse. So they are shipping immediately on order. Uh, you can buy it digitally on the uh, Medifius.net store or Medifius.us, the new US store. Uh, you can pre-order it on both... Uh, Websites. Oh, I mean, not pre-order on UK store, but uh, UK store you can just buy it in print and it'll ship to you right away. Um, or you can buy it in PDF. You'll get the immediate PDF. In the US store, you can uh, pre-order the print copy and get the PDF downloaded, or you can just order the PDF. Um, print copies for the United States. Uh, if you pre-ordered it from the UK site, they are being shipped, obviously, because I got mine from DHL today. And I've heard from a few other people in the US who ordered the book and um, it's on the way to them, last I heard. Uh, but like regular print copies are currently on a boat somewhere in between the UK and the United States, or possibly between the UK and Canada, right? Because right now, uh, I was looking at the news uh, earlier today, and it turns out that um, a lot of shipping containers are being rerouted from the United States to Canada because all the United States ports are completely blocked up. Uh, Chicago is one of the main hubs for uh, for shipping right now, and they are completely overwhelmed uh, with a backlog of uh, shipping containers, uh, trucks that need to be driven around the country, et cetera, et cetera. So, like, uh, you know, the, the global supply chain is still a huge boondoggle as far as, like, getting stuff from one place to another place. So the, the U.S. copies are on the way. Um, I don't know how soon they will get to America, um, hopefully soon, but uh, hopefully before Christmas. Uh, is the uh, is the intent, or not the intent really? That is the hope at this point, uh, because uh, at this point, like our job is done, right? It's printed, it's been delivered to the warehouses, and it's on the way to distribution, and then from distribution it'll go out to stores, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, you know, like if you're into um, supporting your friendly local game store, which I certainly encourage you to do if you happen to have a friendly local game store, um, I do not, but. Um, Talk to them, see if they can pre-order it. Uh, tell them to contact their distributors, or uh, ultimately go, get to uh, uh, Impressions or uh, Flat River Group. They are they are the primary distributor in the United States for Modifius's products. So you know, get find a way to get the book. Uh, if you're willing to wait, you know, I'm sure uh, all the main retailers will have it eventually. You can always order directly from Modifius.us or Modifius.net if you're willing to pay the shipping from the UK. 
Uh, but you know, there's there's value in that because I mean, it depends, right? I mean, if you can afford the shipping and you're willing to, um, you know, pay that cost to get the book faster, then you know, then you get your book faster, right? I mean, that's that's what I did. Uh, anyway, so long long winded way. Wow, this is. Um, this book has been so long in development it's like I'm not I mean I'm a little emotional but like uh, I'm just excited to finally see this in hand and what's really getting me is just this the sheer weight of it right this thing is like I said 320 pages which is you know really core book size and uh, it, it's just astounding how much work went into this, not just me personally, but like everybody that, especially uh, uh, Katya, um, Katya Thomas put so much effort into the art direction on this book and, and just, you know, cat hurting the, the artists through the whole cycle. Cause you know, Shackleton, um, we needed more art for this book, right? A lot of original art where, um, you know, our previous books that we've been doing for the line now for four years, we had some art that we were able to reuse. But by and large, because the Shackleton Expanse is a uh, is a new section of the Beta Quadrant, and we wanted to populate it with new stuff and new species, uh, we we just couldn't we couldn't pull that art either from our archives or from CBS's archives. So we had to create it all new. And uh, when you're looking to create you know 30 to 50 new pieces of art, that's a lot of work. And you know I don't know that you if you're not in the business right, and you're not in the business of making. Uh, illustrated books like this, you may not realize just how much work is involved. Um, like if you think of one piece of art, right, it goes from a concept brief to the artist who does sketches and the sketches go back and forth to refine them and then they work on a final or you know like a pre-final and then that gets review, revised. Um, when they feel like, when the art director and myself and the artist feel like the art is final, then it goes to CBS for review. They have any changes that need to be made to it whether it's um, you know just you know canon issues or if there's any uh, likeness issues, like some some actors um, are very specific about how they want to be portrayed in art, right? And so we need to make sure that that clears their um, their processes, and then you know the art finally gets final. But so that so you know one piece of art could take you know a couple months to go, to go from concept to to finish piece, and when you're doing that. 60 times, you know, that time adds up, you know, and then if they're, you know, if one artist is delayed for a reason or someone goes on vacation, I mean, there's just stuff that happens, right? So anyway, I, I, I digress. Um, this is, uh, so anyway, you know, again, 300 and something page book. This is uh, uh, something special for the line, I think, because this is um, the first book we've done for the line that is really virtually all original material. Uh, for the most part, like there is, there is no Shackleton Expanse anywhere else in in Star Trek. Um, it, like, no, there's no other licensee right now using the Expanse, as far as I'm aware of. I, it hasn't made it into anything else, like a comic book or a novel, or Star Trek Online or anything else. Uh, this is a section of the of the Beta Quadrant that uh, we created whole cloth. Uh, Dayton Ward and Scott Pearson came up with the initial concept way back in 2016 for the Shackle or for the uh, Living Campaign. And CBS looked at that and they said, fine, you know, do whatever you want with it. Have fun with the, that section of the beta project. Obviously, the books are not canon. Um, they may be official, but they're not canon. Um, you know, I, ideally, you know, it would be really super cool if Lower Decks or Discovery or somebody in the production team dropped in a mention of the Shackleton Expanse on screen someday. I, that would just be amazing. Um, but, you know, ultimately, CBS owns it. But they told us, you know, take the Shackleton Expanse and do whatever you want with it. We, you know... Have fun and uh, and be amazing and and so we took that mandate and we've been doing that for you know five years now with the Living Campaign and now the Shackleton book and so what you're going to find so my point being is that the the vast majority of the content in this is original content so it's not like um, uh, you know where, where the Quadrant books and the Division Source books we tried to hew fairly closely to canon right we wanted to to make it fit to what people were seeing on screen. And to some extent, what you've read in novels and comic books, because we are able to pull on those different um, uh, items, right? We can we can drop in novel references, we can drop in Easter eggs from comic books and novels, etc. And I think the fans, I think you all appreciate that 
and because uh, I've, I've gotten plenty of feedback over social media over the years because uh, I feel like I'm pretty well plugged in and uh, so I, I know you all appreciate those Easter eggs especially when we get them right I mean obviously you let us know when we get them wrong but uh, you know I'm, I'm blessed to have Scott Pearson on on the team he's a good friend of mine been a friend of mine for years he also happens to be the primary copy editor for Simon and Schuster on all the Star Trek novels so he has a depth of knowledge about the novels that we're able to draw on and I can say hey Scott I need a I need a Easter egg in here about you know the beta quadrant and he can he can give me a list and I can just drop you know I can pick and choose the ones I want and drop them in uh, you know assuming the assuming the writers or myself don't already have one in our head that we can drop in uh, so anyway <laughs> my long-winded point long-winded point is that um, if you're a Star Trek fan a lot of the content in this book is going to be new to you, right, and to your players. And that's really cool because you can do whatever you want with it and um, and have fun with it and, and not necessarily have to worry too much about whether it fits into canon or not. Um, I mean, certainly this is Star Trek through and through, right? Like, like everything about Star Trek is baked into me and to my writers and my team. That's why they're on my team because uh, they know Star Trek, you know, every bit as well as myself. And then, you know, the, the, the team at CBS, they're all passionate, super, super passionate about Star Trek. And I hope you see the passion that we all have for this, for this not just the product line, but just the property, right? The, the entire franchise, the entire intellectual property that is Star Trek. The, the behemoth entity for 55-something years now that is, that is Star Trek. Um, all that love is in this, is in this book, right? Um, so anyway, that proselytizing <laughs> aside... Um, I do want to say that, you know, even though this is a, a, just a ton of original content, there is a lot of references in here to canon events. And so if you're a game master um, and you're thinking, like, how can I do all this cool stuff in the Shackleton Experience but still have it tied into canon, right? There, there are a wealth of I options in here, um, including the mission briefs and some of the adventures where we were careful to... Um, to make reference to canon, so like, like um, the conceit, if you're not familiar with it, the conceit about the Shackleton Expanse is that three Federation ships are assigned to this space station, um, right, in fact you can see that there's the space station right there, there's the USS Venture, Venture the USS Venture is a, a Galaxy class ship, you know, similar to the Enterprise D, and the Venture happens to be a canonical ship, right, so the Venture was actually in a couple of episodes of, uh, of DS9, I think, and so I made sure to include a mission brief in here um, where if you are playing, like if your player group happens to be using the Venture as your, as your, as your ship, you don't have to, but you know, if you happen to be using the Venture, there's a mission brief in here where you could, you could choose to go off and go fight the Dominion War um, and kind of have that tied into the canonical events that we know that the Venture did. Uh, we did the same thing with the Bellerophon, which is the, uh, the Intrepid class ship. Uh, here, the Bla Blairophon had some interesting things to do in canon in DS9. Um, uh, Dr. Bashir was on it for a little while, and uh, Admiral Ross, I think, if I remember right. And then also the uh, USS Thunderchild is the third ship in an Akira class ship, and the Thunderchild was featured prominently in uh, uh, the movie Star Trek: First Contact. It had it had kind of like a, a nice uh, 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 beauty shot uh, scene during the battle there at the beginning. And so, if you're on the if you pick the Thunderchild as your as your canon ship, then you know. There's, a, there's an opportunity to tie that canon in, depending on how long your version of the Shackleton Expanse campaign goes, right? So you can choose to, um, you know, you can choose to play those canon ships. Uh, also, the USS Lexington, if you choose to play this um, in the original series, uh, we have the Lexington, which is a, a, one of the Constitution-class ships uh, that you are welcome to, uh, to use as well. So um, even though this is primarily original content, we did try to drop in some, uh, some canon references here and there just to... To help add that uh, that that just that little bit of reality, I mean reality, it's all fiction, right? But like that Star Trek reality, so that you could be off exploring this, the Shackleton Expanse in this whole new original section of the of the galaxy, but you can still have those those linchpins tying your campaign, your unique campaign, to canonical events that we already know and love. Uh, so that's just you know an option should you choose to do it. Um, I'm just glancing through this book as I'm talking to you, and like the colors, as always, are just you know, really, really nice on the page. It's a nice matte finish on the pages. It looks great. It smells great, of course, because you know, how can you go wrong with uh, uh, a freshly printed book? This just looks astounding. And you know what always what always strikes me when I'm looking at this is like how different a book feels 
like when you're staring at a screen on a you know a computer you know a screen a computer whatever and then to actually have it in hand and uh, you know I'm a convert I love ebooks especially for fiction like I I'll do ebooks ebook fiction all day long cuz I can put you know a thousand novels on my Kindle and not even you know it doesn't take up any space and you can see I've got a lot of books behind me and um so I, I appreciate PDFs, especially for freaking heavy <laughs> uh, RPG books. Um, but this one, um, you know, it, there's just something nice, to, something to be said for having a nice hardcover in hand. And uh, I know that's going to mark me as a grog nerd, a grog nerd, whatever. But, um, you know, so what, right? I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful book. Um, and I'm not saying that because I worked on it. I'm just saying it because... Uh, it just really came together nicely, and it's just gratifying to see that the uh, uh, that the colors uh, on in print are are every bit as nice as what's on screen. And uh, I'm sure this is uh, a lot of work. Anyway, um, I, I can't really flip through this right because it's just just too big, and uh, I got a hand brace on. But um, I'm gonna I don't know if there's anything I want to show you that I couldn't already show you on the PDF, but I'm going to be doing a lot more uh, videos and discussions and conversations about Shackleton in the coming weeks and months, uh, mostly because there's, there's just so much content in here, right? I mean, this is, like I said, this is a, a campaign setting, right? In fact, it's a campaign guide, but so it's a campaign setting, and it's also a 10-part epic campaign in and of itself, right? Um, and so there's just so much content here, and I'm I'm glad to finally have these 320 pages off my desk and into your you know on its way into your hands because um, I think you know if you're a new GM to the to the game and you want to run your players through something really cool, like grab a copy of the core book and grab Shackleton, and that's all you need. Seriously, that that is literally all you need for years and years and years and years and years of gaming in the Star Trek universe. Uh, whether it's original series, next gen, DS9, Voyager, you could even port this campaign into the 32nd century where Discovery Season 3 left this, right? I mean, I was really careful to make sure that I'm going to put this down so I don't scratch it because <laughs> I'm just that kind of person. Um, uh, what was I saying? Oh, so um, you can put this campaign, like you can literally lift this campaign and put it into any any time frame within um, Star, the Star Trek timeline if you want to. I think you could even make it work in the Enterprise era, um, although I think the, the, the difficulty level will be ramped up quite a bit, right? Because the, the ships in the Enterprise era were much more modestly powered compared to next-gen DS9 and so forth. Um, so, but I'd love to hear somebody do it. I would love to hear somebody take all this content and drop it into the Enterprise era and do something amazing with it. Um, so I, I guess this is an unboxing video. This is really much more of me musing about uh, about the Shackleton book, I've gone on for far too long now, but I wanted you to know that it's it's uh, it's working its way to the United States. If you've pre-ordered it, it should be coming to you soon. If uh, if you're patiently waiting, uh, it's on its way. Um, I can't promise you when it's going to arrive, but I do know that it is it is on the ocean. Um, I, I had a Dathan moment. <laughs> it was like uh, the Shackleton Expanse on the ocean, right? The, like uh, Jalad and. Uh, uh, um, Darmok and Jalad uh, on the ocean, right? So, so Shackleton Expanse on the ocean, and um, it'll be in the United States soonish, and uh, and then Canada soonish, and then hopefully around the rest of the world wherever you may be. Hopefully the hopefully the book can get to you, depending on if you order it. I know there are some challenges for certain countries uh, where shipping is just still exorbitant and difficult to get to you. But uh, you know, there's always the PDF. I know some people don't like PDFs. Um, but if you just want the content, that's the man. That's the best way, to, fastest way to get it too. Is is get the, and, and plus Modifius, um, not to not to be a shill, but uh, Modifius does a great job of pricing their PDFs competitively compared to the print books. So like, if you really want a quick hit, PDFs are the way to go. Um, anyway, uh, Shackleton book. So you know, if you're looking for a uh, a, a heavy duty, big dose of uh, of uh, campaign setting to drop your players into and you're looking for a 10 part campaign plus a whole wealth of information to uh, to, to, to run a campaign uh, I mean you can certainly do it as one shots but if you want to run like a multi-season campaign and have it be like you know Star Trek 
Shackleton experience um, and have your characters go from se season one to season ten and use all the content in this book, you you are set. You are set for life, man or lady or whoever, whatever, whatever you may be, uh, whatever you choose to be. I love you uh, because uh, everybody's welcome to this game. And um, I'll stop there because there's so much more I could say, but I'll save it for future videos. So Shackleton Expanse, it's here in my hands. I'm going to um, just drool over this for a little while now and then uh, get back to work because I've got some other um, cool products that I'm working on right now for you all uh, that'll be coming uh, uh, next year. And uh, can't wait for you all to hear about them because I can't talk about them. But uh, rest assured that I have the next uh, 20 months or so of releases planned out and in the progress of being worked on. So um, don't think for a minute that Star Trek Adventures is going anywhere, you know, unless I hear something otherwise. Uh, but we got, we got tons of stuff coming, and i got to get back to work on it pretty soon here. So uh, this is Jim signing off. Thank you all so much for listening to me ramble yet again on uh, Star Trek Adventures. Um, I hope you hope you can tell how much I love this game and uh, how much I love your support. I'm grateful every day for your support. So check out the Shackleton book. Uh, more to come on it. Uh, live long and prosper and uh, uh, be well. And I will talk to you all real soon.